Hi, and welcome back to part two of lesson four, level one, in spreadsheets for business. In this video, we'll cover the third rule of our business case started in the previous videos. This rule focuses on the usage of the and and not functions, as well as exploring the usage of more of the relational operators available to us in Excel 2013. Rule three says to accept a customer that has all of the following. Not just one of the conditions where we use the or function, but now we have to match all of the list of conditions. So the first condition is a net worth of at least $500,000. The second condition is a composite credit appraisal value of two or lower. The third condition is a paydex score over 70. And the fourth condition is a stress risk class of one. So we have four conditions here and they all have to be met if rule three is to return a value of true. We can't use the OR function because an OR function will return true if any of the values are true, and that's not good enough for us to risk our hard-earned profits on someone that has a shaky credit rating, is it? Here we need a different Boolean function, the AND function. The AND function checks to see if all of the logical arguments are true. If they are, then it returns a value of true. If any one of them is false, then the AND formula will return a false value. Let's start our rule three formula here in this row with an equal sign followed by an and. See here, it basically agrees with my last statement. Isn't it smart? Oh, okay, well, let's put in the left parentheses, moving on, and now it's looking for a series of logical arguments that must be separated by commas. If you recall, the first logical condition for this rule required that the net worth must be at least 500,000. We can reword that to say that the net worth must be greater than or equal to 500,000, can't we? The net worth is located in F3, so we click there and then type in that it must be greater than or equal to 500,000. We need to remember that these numbers in column F are in thousands, so we need to multiply this F3 by 1,000 if we're going to compare it to $500,000, don't we? Let's talk this one through. Logical argument one states that F3 multiplied by 1,000 must be greater than or equal to 500,000 in order for this logical argument number one to be true. All right, let's move on to the second logical argument. It states that the composite credit appraisal value must be two or lower. We can reword this to mean the composite credit appraisal value must be less than or equal to two. So let's add to our formula H3 less than or equal to 2 followed by a comma. The third condition or logical argument says that the paydex score must be greater than 70. So let's click on this paydex score here in column I and then the greater than sign for the value of 70. The fourth and final condition says that the stress risk class must be equal to 1. So I'll type in a comma here and then add this cell J3 equals 1. Those are our four conditions or logical arguments separated by commas, so we're pretty much done here, so we'll just close these parentheses. If we did everything right, then this formula will only render true if all four of these conditions or logical arguments are true. If any one is false, then it will render or return false. Looking at the conditions, this first one, for instance, 400,000 is not greater than 500,000. So that part is false, so there's no point in checking any of these other three. If they're not all true, then we'll get a false for our output anyway. Let's hit enter and see what we get. Okay, false. So far, so good. So let's copy it down and test this formula out a bit. It's pretty complicated, so I don't want to trust it, just my first whack through. Let's look at a true result here on this row. Is the net worth greater than 500? Yes. Is the composite credit appraisal two or lower? Yes. Is the paydex score over 70? Yes. And the stress class is one, so it all appears to be good. Just to make sure that I'm right and not just lucky, let me test this manually down here on the bottom in our test customer that we started before here on the bottom row. Let me copy this good customer from up here down to here to our test company and then copy the rule three formula down one more row and it's still true. Whew. 
Now let's alter each of these values one at a time to see if the value changes to false when we expect it to. Let's change this net worth from this value to 501, still true. Then 500, still true. How about 499? Now false, so that part tests out. When one of these turns false, you get an output of false. Now let's change that value back to a valid value so it's true again. Moving to the next value, let's change the composite credit appraisal to 1, that's true. 2, still true. 3, fail. Perfect, that's what we wanted. Let's change it back to 1 to make it true again. Now let's go to the Paydex score. Change it to 71, still true. Now change it to 70 and it should go false here. Yes. Change that back to 71. Lastly, we want to check out the stress risk class. If we change it to anything other than 1, it should go false here. And it does, so co this complex rule number 3 completely checks out. Let's explore another Boolean formula here that will occasionally help us out. How can we tell whether any of our customers have met these conditions? Let's type in a description of our question here into this cell. Do any meet this rule? We can go here to the bottom of this rule 1 column and enter which formula? Are any of these true? Sounds like the OR function you say? You're exactly right. Equals OR parentheses. Now click and drag over this entire column and there you go. Close the parentheses, hit enter. Now let's copy that formula across and we can answer this question for all three rules at the same time. What if we wanted the reverse of that? We want to know if none of these values are true. Or another way of saying it, are they all false and all of the customers failed this rule? Let's type out our question over here. Do none meet this rule? Now how do we do this, you ask? If we think about this logically, which is what this chapter is all about anyway, if the answer to this question here, do any meet the rule, is true if any are true, and false if they are all false, let me just change these all to false here for a second to play with it. See, this is true almost all the time unless they're all false. Let me turn this one to true, this one to true, see they're true. If I turn them all to false, then this turns into false. Well, I want the exact opposite, don't I? If they're all false, then I want this to be true. On the other hand, if any of these are true, I want this to be false. So how do I get the exact opposite of an OR statement, you ask? Well, guess what? There's another Boolean formula that does this for us, the NOT formula. If this cell is to show us the opposite of this cell, then we just type in equals NOT parentheses this cell right above it, parentheses, and hit enter. Voila! Let me test it out here. If all of rule 1 is false, then this OR function returns false, and this new NOT function tells us the exact opposite, that yes, it is true that all of these are false. Whew! Let me put all this data back to where it was. And let me show you another use for this NOT function. If we go up here to each customer into the next column and call this one customer passes at least one rule. And this column customer fails all rules. This column gets the OR function, right? Equals OR these three cells parentheses, and enter. Now in this one we want the opposite, but rather than me just putting a not in this cell and referencing this cell, I'm going to combine this OR and the NOT formula into one cell itself rather than this cell referencing the other one. I'm going to copy this formula from this cell up here in the formula bar and then hit the escape key. Now I go into this cell and its formula bar and paste the formula into it. Now I'll put a set of parentheses around that formula and do what's commonly referred to as wrapping it and then put a NOT function in front of that wrapped OR function. 
And there you go. That's it for now. See you in the next video for a demonstration of the insanely underused conditional formatting functionality.